Hi, I'm Joel, and I had a problem of hearing a delay of my vocals in my headphones while recording vocals over an instrumental track. So I thought, maybe others have the same problem. In this video, I'm going to show you how to bypass the playback or USB side of a mix knob to record vocals and playback an instrumental track at the same time by running both of these audio signals directly into an audio interface to get a clear vocal sound with almost no latency in headphones. This video contains a stereo audible demonstration of the delay that you may experience while using the playback or USB side of the mix knob as a way to differentiate between the problem and the solution. All right, so let's get started. The first thing you're gonna wanna do to make this all happen is get the right cable. So I'm gonna show you real quick which cable you're gonna need. You just get stereo XLR out to headphone jack. So that's stereo out, male, headphone jack male. And the reason we're gonna wanna run this stereo is so that when we play back the instrumental track, which I'll show you later in this video, you can hear the full effects uh, of the panning. We also have dual mono, which is what you're hearing from my microphone that I'm talking through right now. And the reason we're gonna run everything in stereo is because you won't be able to hear yourself in both sides of the headphones um, unless you have both of these engaged and you want them to be as close to um, as close to the same level as possible so you hear yourself even. We have XLR to headphone jack again. This is the mono cable version of this um, in case you wanna just run your instrumental track back. Um, as mono, you have that option as well. I prefer to do stereo to get the ideal setup so that when you're singing vocals or doing vocals over an instrumental track, you can hear the panning effects uh, or the left and right effects of any of the instrumental track and we're gonna hook these cables up. Um, red is right, and the other color in this case is blue will be our left uh, input. Red will go here, blue will go here, and this will go into our headphone port on our computer. And you can do the same setup if you only have two inputs, so you don't have these extra inputs here. These are four inputs. Obviously, you can have four, you can have more, um, and in the, say the case you only have two, you would just run the mono cable into input one or two and then so you can run the mic through the empty channel you have um, either one or two so let's say you have mic on one and then you have this cable this mono XLR um, headphone jack which is also an eighth inch or 3.5 millimeter um, male TRS cable this headphone jack would go in into the computer's headphone port and this would go into your audio interface. So to kind of go over what this is, this is the Behringer Euphoria 404 HD. I'm gonna be using this audio interface for the demonstration. You can actually leave these down all the way um, because when we send the signal from the headphones to the XLRs, um, it will automatically create a level as you'll see on uh, three and four. With these indicator lights you'll see here and here. Um, everything else can be disengaged. We're running this in stereo. Um, on this interface you can run everything mono in which you'll hear everything just dead down the middle. Since we want to get the instrumental track playing back in stereo, um, we're going to want to have this disengaged. Um, and this is our mix knob. You'll, you'll hear as we add more of the computer, you'll hear less of me. Um, and you'll get a feel for that. Um, you're probably watching this video because you've had issues with this mix knob. Um, this is your main output. We're not going to worry about that because we're just going to use headphones. Um, we're not going to be doing any mixing um, with speakers. The main outs come from the back of this audio interface into our monitors. But like I said, don't worry about the main. Leave that down. And you'll see here, this is the monitor AB. Um, this is specifically for your software outputs being played back through your headphones. A is output one and two of your software outputs. And B if you and B if you engage it um, would be software outputs three and four. And that's what you'd hear back in your headphones. And this is just the 
the dial for volume of your headphones uh, just to go over what this does um, so the next thing we're going to want to do is plug in these cables red is right whatever your other color is would be the left uh, in this case it's blue so let's go ahead and plug this headphone jack into our computer in the headphone port I plug in the XLRs and pop this in. Probably hear this on the right. And yeah, probably hear this on the left. Bit of a pop. All right. So now we have our connections. And we're also running uh, dual mono cables here. Once again, because um, this is your left channel and your right channel. And this equates to the stereo. In other words, if this is in stereo, which is disengaged on this audio interface, um, you'll hear this will be left, right, left, right. One, two, three, and four are your inputs here. And like I said, we're running this uh, dual mono, which is, means the same signal being sent uh, through both one and two. This carries a, a left and a right signal and this carries just a, uh, a mono signal. So stereo signal, mono signal. But we need the stereo image to get the full panning effects of the instrumental track. We're just gonna run dual XLR male from XLR female, which is connected to the microphone. And we're gonna run an aux eighth inch male to these two XLR outs into the audio interface. Now we have everything connected. The reason I had these connected prior is because you wouldn't be able to hear me through the microphone if these weren't connected to the audio interface. You want to have all this set up prior to opening up your digital audio workstation. And uh, before we even get started with the digital audio workstation or DAW, we're going to want to go to our audio devices and audio MIDI setup. This is for Mac. So we actually want to create um, an audio aggregate that includes both the UMC, which is the, uh, the UMC 404HG, which is the audio interface I just showed you, the Behringer. And then you're also going to want to include the external headphones. Like I said, once again, this is for Mac. I'm not sure how it works on a PC, but this is how it works on a Mac. So once we've created our aggregate, um, let's label it. And we're going to call this whatever you want to call it, but I'll call it Bypass Mix Knob Setup. So we have something to recognize. And you'll notice here we have our inputs of the UMC 404HD. Um, this relates to inputs 1, 2, 3, and 4 in our I.O. And out 1, 2, 3, and 4. You can tell this is gray, therefore it connects to these input channels and output channels and then our five and six um, we could label them but let's just acknowledge that external headphones corresponds to five and six out in this audio aggregate which is like i said once again bypass mix knob setup so once you have bypass mix knob setup your audio aggregate um, labeled we'll go ahead and open up our daw and in this case i have pro tools so what we'll do is open our demonstration project. And here we go. Once you've opened up your audio workstation, you go to zoom in here real quick. You can see that I have just output one and two, which is a monitor on the headphones on the audio interface I just showed you. And then let's see here we have vocals. And we're actually just going to run our vocals as mono. We could run it stereo like I showed you through the dual mono XLRs into inputs one and two. But you want this dead center. Um, there's a lot of other ways you can go about that. Let's just keep it simple and run the input one. You could run input two as well. I mean, you probably get a similar level as long as those two gain knobs are about the same, which they are. Anyway, so we have our instrumental track, which we want to play back. And then we have an audio track for recording vocals. Once again, we'll just put this back to input one. 
I'll make sure these are out one and two, out one and two, and just go ahead and select our playback engine. Um, currently it's set to UMC 404 HD, which is the audio interface I just showed you. And we're gonna go down and select bypass mix knob setup, which is what we just created as an audio aggregate. Go ahead and select that. So you, you'll get a little pop-up that says this. Selecting this playback engine will automatically now be reopened when you're done changing settings. Are you sure you want to proceed? Click yes. And then press OK. Once we have our audio software loaded up, you'll see I have an instrumental track here and I also have an audio track here. In order to see the level in the audio software, put on the input monitoring or turn on record enabled. Now is a good time to kind of demonstrate to you what happens with the mix knob. You've probably experienced this where once you turn up the mix knob from direct input to more of the computer so you can play back a track so as as you get a delay in your headphones now you'll actually get the same sound in your clarity of your vocal track in your recording software when you play that back i'll show you that i'll show you that later on but i just wanted to do a quick demo on probably what you're experiencing which is the issue i was coming across so let's say we want to play back this track we're going to need to turn up the mix knob and you'll hear more of the track so what happens is when you're playing back an instrumental track like the one you see above and then you dial back the mix knob to this sound you'll hear when i play back the track this is me putting in more of the playback so you can hear more of the instrumental track and then you'll also notice the vocals that i'm recording over the instrumental track also get delayed or create a delay effect so this is the issue that you're probably experiencing with the mix knob on your audio interface which is the issue i had and this is a way to resolve that issue is by doing the cable connections i just showed you on my audio interface so by connecting those xlr stereo red blue and then the headphone jack out this will allow me to bypass any delay that i would otherwise experience in my headphones so here's how we do that all right so when you go into your io to make sure everything looks good for whatever reason uh, i had this mapped out to three and four or one and two in my bus so make sure you don't only just check your inputs make sure that all looks good one two three four it's set up as one two mono three four mono or stereo so we have the options here i'm going to run input one for our mic and then here we have our outputs two, one two three four and external headphones one and two out five and six make sure this mapping looks correct in this case it is not in our bus page in our io so we're going to make sure this is mapped out to headphones one and two or out five and six depending on what you're looking at five and six external headphones one and two make sure that i was also check marked otherwise it will not be available so we'll hit OK. And now we have our five and six as our send. And it all should play back with the mix knob all the way running direct. We'll play back the instrumental track. As you can hear, my vocals are coming out very clear. And I'm also able to hear back the instrumental track very well. Our mix knob is all the way here. If we were to turn this up, we'd get more of the instrumental track. But in this case, we don't need to do that because we're running hardware from the he external headphone jack to our audio interface. We're bypassing that terrible delay and record some vocals. So let's go ahead and get started. Record enable. Testing, 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 testing. All right, and also I wanted to show you one more thing. Let's just do another quick recording. This time what we're gonna do is show you what happens when we do this. 
and then we don't use the send out five and six to the headphones. We're going to just do another recording this time with what you're probably experiencing, which is using the playback side of this mix knob, as you see here. And we're going to go ahead and record it again over that. Testing, 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 testing. We're actually going to want to change back the mix knob to play it all the way back. Testing, testing, testing. Testing, 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 testing. Testing, 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 testing. The recordings actually came out very clear on both. So for this first recording, what we did, we just ran everything direct, which is out five and six. Uh, everything running direct input on the mix knob, dial all the way to the left for direct input. We used out five and six disabled like it is now. We turn the dial towards the playback side. These two recordings are from the input and what you're hearing back through the headphones is the output. And I understand that even though it came out the same, just as clear, you're probably not singing as well or doing vocals as well if you can't hear yourself in the headphones as well. And so in that regard, you're probably going to sound better in a recording that's like this with everything direct and you're able to hear yourself clearly in headphones without a delay versus having the delay in the headphones by playing back the instrumental track and recording vocals with the mix knob turned to the playback side as opposed to the direct input. Direct, more computer, and also for playback of instrumental track, but we're bypassing that and we ran everything direct out five and six. Then you can adjust the gain knob on your send to get more instrumental track. I recommend saving your setup in Pro Tools. You could file, let's see, save as template, and save your session template. So you have audio aggregate already there going to label this bypass mix knob setup right, and hit OK. So that way we close the session and we want to create a new session. So that way when you get started, you can just go to create from template and we have our bypass mix knob set up. When we create it, you'll see you have the instrumental track here and your vocal track plop in whatever your instrumental track might be into this track right here and then you can start recording vocals over that track like and subscribe youtube page jala productions would love to get your feedback whether you have questions or comments i'll put the links to the cables in the description the two cables that i showed you hope you like this video